So we're going to start with Christine Ford, and then we'll go to Judge Kavanaugh, who was second in his response, which of course he totally denies any wrongdoing whatsoever. Overall on Christine Ford, she came across as a very polished person. Her opening statement, she delivered it very well. There's nobody who can sit there and say, that woman was a liar. You couldn't do that and be a responsible person. You had to listen to the statement. The statement was delivered fairly methodically. I'm sure she was well rehearsed. But the woman looked sincere and looked aggrieved. That's the truth. But then a lot of things started to happen. Instead of the Republican senators asking her questions because they're all frightened, they're all men, it's me too, they handed it over to a um, prosecutor from Arizona named Rachel Mitchell. So Ms. Mitchell interrogated Christine Ford at five-minute intervals. Then they went over to Democratic senators that basically don't want to know the truth about anything who proceeded to elevate Christine Ford to sainthood. Okay. That's what they do, that's who they are, what are you going to do? I thought that Rachel Mitchell was too gentle. She didn't have a sense of urgency in her questioning. And as somebody who's been through this, I want my advocate to, to really uh, um, get across the seriousness of this. Now, Dr. Um, Judge Kavanaugh did that, and I'll, I'll get to him. He did that, all right? He came out smoking. But Rachel Mitchell, not so much. In fact, there was only one, and this is uh, for my crew in, in New York City, this is soundbite number four we're going to run here, okay? It was only one time that there was really a confrontation, and that was when Rachel Mitchell asked Dr. Ford about her former best friend, Leland Kaiser. This is key now. This is key. L Dr. Ford put three people at the party where she says she was sexually assaulted by Kavanaugh. All right? Mark Judge, a man named Patrick Smith, and her best friend, Leland Kaiser. All right? Finally, Rachel Mitchell asked her about Miss Kaiser. Roll the tape. When you when you did leave that night, did Leland Kaiser, now Kaiser, ever follow up with you and say, hey, what, what happened to you? Uh, I've had communications with her recently. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like the next day. Or oh, no, she didn't know about the event. She was downstairs during the event and I did not share it with her. Okay. Have you been, a, are you aware that the three people at the party besides yourself and, and Brett Kavanaugh have given statements under penalty of felony to the committee? Yes. And are you aware of what those statements say? Yes. Um, are you aware that they say that they have no memory or knowledge of such a party? Yes. Okay. Do you have any particular motives to ascribe to Leland? I guess we could take those one at a time. Um, Leland has uh, significant health challenges, and I'm happy that she's focusing on herself and getting the health treatment that she needs. And she let me know that she needed her lawyer to take care of this for her. And she texted me right afterward with an apology and good wishes and et cetera. So I'm glad that she's taking care of herself. I don't expect that PJ and Leland would remember this evening. It was a very unremarkable party. It was not one of their more notorious parties um, because nothing remarkable happened to them that evening they were downstairs. And Mr. Judge is a different story. Um, I would expect that he would remember that this happened. Well, that's kind of interesting because according to Dr. Ford, um, Brett Kavanaugh and Mark Judge were blind drunk blind drunk, and they were hurtling all over the house, and they pushed her into a room and locked the door, and they, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, assaulted her, 
And then afterward, they went downstairs, still blind drunk, while Dr. Ford stayed in a bathroom upstairs. And then a few moments later, Dr. Ford ran out of the house and somehow got home, but she doesn't know how she got home. Now, if you were at a party and there were two boys blind drunk, you wouldn't remember that? She says, I don't expect PJ and Leland would remember this evening. It was a very unremarkable party. Was it? With two people blind drunk going all over the house? Okay. I would have followed up there if I had been um, quizzing Dr. Ford. And then I would have said to her, very respectfully, you really didn't answer the question. You're saying that your former friend, Leland, has health problems now, and because she does that, you're implying that she wanted her lawyer to say whatever, okay? Do you have the text where she apologizes? I'd like to see that text. I'd like to see the context of that text. Can we see that? You see, it doesn't stack in the sense of being a human being. So. If you are a victim and you name three people that, can, that, was, that were on the premises when you were victimized, in circumstances you vividly have described, and you did that very convincingly to the whole world, but all three people don't remember any of it, nothing, that's enough. That's what they call reasonable doubt.